So my sister had her first kid, so I flew out to Nebraska and I sat around for a while and I kind of just fell off the video making bandwagon. So my bad, I'm really sorry, but uh, I'm back. And now that I'm back, my favorite constellation is up. So I'm gonna talk about that. Now, if you're any kind of astronomer at all, you probably already know what my favorite constellation is because it's the best constellation. If you don't, here are some hints. It contains more Messier objects than any other constellation. It is easily identifiable by its handle and its spout. It is the home of a crazy insane star called Saccharides Object. It is also floating over the Milky Way's galactic center with the giant supermassive black hole in the middle. The wow signal originated from this constellation, so, you know. And if that doesn't give it away, some of the objects in this constellation include the galaxies Sagdig and Sagdeg, and of course, the radio source known as Seeker A. Yes, it is Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the bomb in oh so many ways, but the main way is there's a lot of cool stuff in there. So Sagittarius means archer in Latin, and he is an archer, but he's usually depicted as a centaur. So he's like an archer with the bow, and then he's got the four legs and everything. But in real life, he just looks like a teapot. So if you've seen a teapot in the sky, you've seen Sagittarius, and that is the coolest constellation there is. Sagittarius is a zodiacal constellation, and for those of you who don't care, that just means that it follows the path that the sun makes throughout the year, or the ecliptic. So not a trend-setting constellation. If I mention all the stuff in Sagittarius, this episode would take like an hour. So I'm just gonna go over what I like the most in there, and if I miss something cool, feel free to chastise me in the comments. So firstly, stuff you can actually see with a small telescope or even binoculars would include the Lagoon Nebula, the Trifid Nebula, the Omega Nebula, globular clusters M22, M54, M28, and M75, which are all notable for different reasons. So today we're going to talk about the globular clusters in Sagittarius because if I talk about everything, it just it's going to take forever. So. Globular clusters. A globular cluster is a group of stars in a spheroidal mass. A lot of them look like fireworks, with the core dense and bright and the outskirts spreading out into space. To me, they sometimes look like spilled diamonds or shattered glass or kind of like a paint splatter, but they're really just fabulously beautiful. What's interesting about globular clusters is that they are just these huge masses of stars that are gravitationally bound together. M22 itself has more than 70,000 stars, but most of the time, most of those stars are, well, they're all incredibly similar. The going theory is that these stars are born right around the same time and from the same materials, which gives many of these globular clusters their uniform appearance. I see how that could seem boring compared to something like a nebula with these diverse colors and lines and the dust. But you have to think about it like one of those giant Korean programs where everyone synchronizes their dance moves and they're all wearing the same thing. It's impressive because all of these stars are so similar in these globular clusters. It's like having triplets 23,000 times. Now, if you don't think that globular clusters look interesting, you should know that from a composition standpoint, they are fascinating. These stars are very old. Most of them formed right after the Big Bang. Chemically, globular clusters tend to have the same stars, stars that are all made out of the same stuff. And they cluster around the galactic halo. Now, this is very important for the cosmic distance ladder, which, again, I'm just gonna have to do another episode on. So part of our understanding of where we are in the galaxy absolutely comes from the distances to these globular clusters and our knowledge of where these globular clusters cluster around. <laughs> I'm so funny. What's extremely interesting is when these clusters don't have the same types of stars. A while ago, physicists, astrophysicists, were figuring out that there's these weird stars in globular clusters and they don't match anything else, and they called them blue stragglers. So typically, when stars are old and they're of a certain chemical composition, you get these very large, old, kind of dying stars. Well, blue stragglers, they seem like these young stars. You know, they act like young stars. When we say young, what we're really talking about is, yes, there's a correlation between age and heat, temperature. And so blue stars do tend to be on the youth side, and orange, red stars getting up there, they're, they're getting old. Yellow stars like our sun, somewhere around middle age. Our sun is like 40 if it was a person. So blue stragglers, the theory is now that these are stars that just rammed into each other and they made these really, really hot, blue stars, which is a really cool thing if, if you think about how dense that must be. Come with me on a journey of the mind here. Space is really big. Think about Proxima Centauri, the closest star to our sun. Proxima Centauri is 
about four light years away, which is 25 trillion miles away. Our closest star, besides the sun, is 25 trillion miles away. Voyager 1 is traveling really fast, about 38,000 miles per hour. That's actually super fast. The fastest bullets that you're ever gonna play with are going around 3,000 to 4,000 miles per hour. So Voyager, this 1,600 pound space probe, is hurtling through space at 38,000 miles an hour. It is going 12 times as fast as some of the fastest speeding bullets. If it were traveling in the direction of Proxima Centauri, our closest neighbor, it would get there in 70,000 years. 70,000 years. We are nowhere near Proxima Centauri, not even close. If you think about space in the bigness that it really is, and you think about how dense and compact these globular clusters have to be for the statistical likelihood of some stars ramming into other stars, they're actually very, very dense. And see, this is why high energy physics is cool. Because if you ram like two cars together, you're just, you're just, you're gonna get a ruined car. But if you ram two stars together, you get a new star. That's pretty awesome. Back to globular clusters. There are 12 classifications of globular clusters. One being the densest, 12 being the least dense. And this is called the Shapely, uh, Harlow Shapely fame classification. Number 12 is all the way up there. You're getting into some really loose clusters. These are not open clusters. So open clusters and globular clusters are completely two separate different things. Don't mix them up. And again, I'll just have to do another episode on open clusters. It's Okay. Focus, focus. So let's talk about M22. Messier 22 may be one of my favorite objects ever. It's really cool because, first of all, it was the very first globular cluster ever discovered. There is some dispute over who actually discovered it, but Edmund Haley of Haley's Comet fame attributed the discovery to Abraham Isle in 1665. And by the late 1660s, other astronomers had seen it, so it was really one of those very early discoveries that happened not too terribly long after the first telescope was invented. And the reason it was discovered so quickly is it's quite bright and it's quite close to Earth, at about 10,000 light years away, which astronomically is not that far away. M22 is also really old. Its estimated age is about 12 billion years old. So this cluster of stars is extremely old, like almost as old as the entire universe old. Moving forward, M54. Messier 54 is really interesting because like M22, it's bright and fairly easy to see, but it's actually outside of our galaxy. So it's much bigger than M22. M22 has a radius of about 50 light years, whereas M54 has a radius of 150 light years. M54 is about 90,000 light years away from us, most likely in the Sag Deg galaxy, which is right next to us, and probably crosses through our galaxy at regular intervals. Nobody panic, obviously it's not a problem. Until it is a problem. Then panic. M28. M28 is a normal looking class 4 globular cluster, and it's nice. It's farther away than M22 at 18,000 light years, but not impressively far like M54. It's comparatively small with a radius of 30 light years, but in 1986 it went from being cool to holy garp when astronomers found a millisecond pulsar in there. So I'm gonna have to do another episode on millisecond pulsars and stellar evolution. But basically, millisecond pulsars are these really old, dense stars that are spinning very, very rapidly, hundreds of times a second, hence the name. A bunch of these suckers were found in other globular clusters, but M28 was the first, and it's in Sagittarius, so go look at it. M75. Okay, so M75 isn't super special in any way other than it's just really pretty. It's about 70,000 light years away, and it's a class 1 globular cluster, making it very, very compact near its core. And again, it's very good looking, so go look at it through a telescope. There are more globular clusters in Sagittarius, including M69, M70, M55, and NGC 6723. But frankly, I couldn't come up with anything to say about these other than they're shiny too. But I would go outside right now and look at Sagittarius. Just take some binoculars, even terrible ones, but maybe try to find the biggest binoculars you can find and go out there and look for these globular clusters. Get a sky map or go to Sky and Telescope. Because really, globular clusters are beautiful. They're spectacular groupings of 
many, many stars, and these stars were born right after the Big Bang. And how many stars can say that about themselves? So go look at them. It's good to be a geek. It's good to be a creep. It's good to draw my pictures and no one will have a scene. It's good to be a geek. It's good to be a gnome. It's good I'll never wait and run aside the telephone. No one ever. You know looking out on its future for a long, long time. Not like, you know, our sun, which is ah, four billion years. I'm so old. Yes, I know, the Z machine guys have created faster bullets, but I am talking about regular projectiles here, not crazy A projectiles that happen when you pair the military up with really, really smart people. 